Michael. I am 24 years old, and I have a food truck that I started in college um, at Indian State University. I went to Avon High School, if you guys know where that's at, and then I ran for Indiana State, and my senior year of college, I decided to go to, which was the food truck. Uh, I started it with a couple friends. Now I run it with a friend of mine, the same friend I started it with. So, uh, doing that, and then I also started, or starting a um, technology company, a software company in the HR industry. So when you guys start doing phone interviews, we make a, a tool for HR people that helps them do phone interviews a little bit better and faster. So that's a little bit about me. Um, that's awesome. So do you live in the Indianapolis area still? Yeah, I'm actually literally on the west side of downtown. So what's your food truck called? Oh, it's Twisted Fry. So I'll show you guys. Um, oh, we love Twisted to see Fry. It. Twisted Fry. Yeah, that was in Brazil. Yeah. One of my students says it's been to Brazil, Indiana. It has. This right here is me, and then this is the co-founder that I was talking about. So we started this together, and we specialize in making these loaded fries that looks like this. Oh, that's awesome. Can you tell, tell us about the fries? Yeah. So like what kind of toppings and things? So they have um, barbecue chicken, buffalo chicken. Uh, we do a pulled pork and a bacon one as well. They're so wondering what's on top in that picture. This one is a half and half combo, but it's buffalo sauce and ranch on this side, and then barbecue sauce and ranch on this side, and it's chicken oh, underneath. That's awesome. So what made you decide to, to go the food truck, into the food truck business? What made me decide was really just the need. So I wasn't like obsessed with food or anything like that. I just saw that, like we saw that um, there was no good food option. So to give you a backstory, in Terre Haute, there's the bar scene. And right. There's one restaurant that's open after you go to the bars. And so if you wanted like McDonald's or, you know, Taco Bell or something like that, you're going to drive. And so we saw that as a clear issue because people would drink and drive to go get food. And we had a survey that said that 40% of students were doing that. You know, out of 212 students. Um, so we knew that we had something to go off of. And um, so we started creating this food truck idea to serve a need, essentially that, you know, there's a void, there's only one restaurant open, and if you don't want that, you're driving. So let's pull a truck up <laughs> to them so they don't have to drive to get food, and then they can just go home. So how old were you when you started the journey? It was 2016, so three years ago. I was 21, I think. 21, and still in college? Yeah, I was a senior. So. Oh, that's awesome. We started the so I got high in our junior year, though. Okay. I've got high schoolers, so that's that's not much older than some of my kids are now. Yeah. So I started actually doing stuff in high school. I started uh, painting shoes. So I was doing some, like, custom painted shoes and selling those um, just as a little, like, I've always had this little entrepreneurial spirit about myself ever since probably my junior year of high school. So that was my first ever endeavor was that. And how did you get financing? Did you have to get financing or did you to buy the truck? Yeah. So for this one, we had, we were blessed to have uh, my business partners, aunt and mom gave us some money to start it. Uh, but for the next, if we do a next one, it'll be from a bank probably. Um, but they like to see like something they can own if you fail essentially. So um, that's why like going to a bank from the beginning, it couldn't work, but if you talk to them, right. yeah, you can find the money um, as long as they believe in it, essentially, as long as you believe in it. Are you close to needing another one? We actually, so funny stories, we were going to, we had a great first two years and we were like ready to expand. Um, we were in the Indy 500, we're in the concession stands, like we're doing great in the night shift, so we were ready. And we put money down on a truck. We put a $21,000 on a new one. And the guy has since ran away with our money. And uh, <laughs> we don't have our... Oh, my gosh. So we're, we went through a tougher time this past year, but uh, things are looking upward now. So we That's might. awesome. What sports did you play? In high school, I played football and ran track. And played I played football for high school. 
Yeah, we played against Lawrence Central. They beat us by like seven. My uh, hometown, <laughs> my hometown uh, football team, Richmond Red Devils. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. That's so, Devin, are you able to do this full time, or do you have to work um, at a different job to kind of supplement your income at this point? Yeah. So, since we had that hardship, I stopped taking money from the food truck, and then um, I had a side hustle that I was just like, I'll just make money from this. Before that, though, I was paying. We were paying ourselves to live just the food truck, which is really awesome. Um, that is awesome. And then now I work for another company here in Indy part time, just to really just to just cause. And then I'm we're raising money for the software startup that'll pay me full time. So we're. I told you earlier we're gonna do it. We're gonna have lunch. We were able to borrow a food truck, which is awesome. So we don't have any expenses for that, obviously. And we're gonna get. We're gonna do a, a just a small loan. And we are going to get food at Gordon Food Service in bulk. And then we're going to serve lunch to probably about 50 people or so on our site next Tuesday. So what kind of advice do you have for us? Just kind of anything. Yeah. This will be a first for all of us. It's like you're serving it this one time. Yes. Yeah. We just – exactly. So I would say, like, try to be as – one, I think the main key, like for success, is that, so making sure that people are happy when they come to your truck. Like our thing that we tell our employees is that we're not really selling food; like we're selling the experience of good service. And like, but we just want to have really nice people in our truck so that our customers want to come back. Um, so that's one. And then on the second one, my favorite part is the food. Like, how creative can you get with the stuff that you have access to? So, like, everything that we do, um, you can get at GFS. So, um, just try to think outside the box. Like, you know, sandwiches are cool, but, like, is there a cool spin that you can put on a sandwich? Like, we put loaded fries on our burgers. Like, people don't do that normally. But it tastes just as good or not better, and people are, like, crazy about it. So, just try to think a, a slight bit outside the box. Or if you can't figure out something, just go online and go to like food beast and just steal food beast. okay <laughs> we'll have to write that down i've never heard of that one so like food beast you can go, if you look up any food blog online like in california normally um those are the ones that got like the cool stuff we yeah. decided on um like a nachos or using lettuce as a base but doing a chicken and a ground beef and then doing different toppings that we brainstormed and probably a fresh pico, maybe even a mango salsa or a black bean and corn kind of salsa with it. And they wanted to do yogurt parfaits. And we're going to try to figure out a Mexican twist on that. And then we found some recipes for some, some fresh um, lemonade, different kinds of things. And there's, there's a really cool thing that I loved in Mexico, um, agua sandia. So it's a watermelon a fresh watermelon drink that's very Mexican. So we thought we'd take a look at that too. Hey, we're inviting people um, who we know. So we're inviting employees who work here. We're inviting school people. So it won't be open to the public. Um, it's, it's just kind of a one-time experience. And we're actually going to get people to RSVP so that we can kind of plan for the number of people that we'll be serving. Nice. That's cool. In regards to the menu idea, I know we wanted to try at some point. It's like, well, I think it'd be cool if like start putting a flair on it, like not just Fritos, but like, Fritos or like different chip bag. Okay. Fritos as an option because nobody likes Fritos by themselves. So like, if I could get a walking taco with Cool Ranch Doritos, I'd be kind of happy. So just like mixing it up, stuff like that. Uh, even if it was on like hot Cheetos, like that would be good. Okay. I really just saw a nacho dish that was hot Cheeto base. So we'll have to talk about that, different kind of bases for it. And I thought that some of the people that we're inviting will be teacher type people who are about my age. And I told the guys that probably offering a, a nice lettuce kind of base would open that up for people who aren't necessarily doing a lot of process kinds of things. For sure, for sure. So we talked about kind of knowing who you're inviting and what, what might be interesting to, to that group of people. For sure. Yeah, this is what it was. Oh, don't overstretch your menu. So you'll learn as you're serving people, like, 
people line up pretty quickly and it gets overwhelming really quickly. So the easier your menu can be to execute, the better. So that doesn't mean you necessarily have less like little options, but if you, right. have, you know, like for us, we have over seven menu items, but like fries is in each one of those menu items. That's, it's really right. To execute most of it. It's just like little changes. So, you know, little tweaks to menu items to make them totally different. Um, that would be really useful as well. The food truck has little refrigerators on the side on the side that people can access to like to get the yogurt parfaits out. We were wondering about having a table with some of the toppings. Maybe doing the main toppings on the. I think we're going to look at those cardboard boat kind of things for serving, so it's not a flat plate. Yep. But we wondered about maybe putting the hot kinds of things on from the food truck, and then having maybe a table with some of the probably the condiment kind of type stuff that people could do on their own to, to move them through the line much more quickly. Yeah, that would be easy, for sure. Would you do drinks in a separate location too? No, we do drinks out of the truck, like we have it in our fridge. It depends on what your truck has though, because we have, you know, we have a deep freezer and two fridges. So one of those fridges is dedicated to drinks. Okay. We were thinking of doing water water bottles. We know some people will, those are pretty popular and they're pretty inexpensive. And then like I said, we were thinking of a fresh fruit kind of thing. And again, a, a watermelons are not very expensive right now. And that would be a, kind of an authentic, kind of interesting thing, I think, to mess around with. So do you guys have employees yet besides? Yeah, so like we live in Indianapolis, but the truck is running in Terre Haute, Indiana. It runs every week. I honestly, we have a manager that we trust a lot, and she runs the show. Yeah, we have about ten employees that we uh, work with, and yeah, they run it and they do a really good job. Some of these guys are interested in, you know, thinking about a first part-time job, maybe while they're attending high school, or maybe even looking at jobs after high school. What are some things that they could be working on now, or what kinds of of characteristics are you guys looking for if you were to hire somebody you know maybe an, an older teenager but somebody to work with your business I think for us what stands out is like this is gonna be hard maybe a little bit hard to follow but basically for me when I'm looking at employees it's always good to see people that have already started doing things on their own so it really doesn't matter what you do it's just a matter of that you're doing um, I tell them like people that want to be entrepreneurs as well it's like people want to help those who are already um, moving. So like there's a saying or there's like this story um, that talks about this person that was stuck on the side of the street and his car was dead and he was just waving people down to try and get them to help him and no one would stop to help him. And then once he started pushing his car to like get to a gas station, people would stop and help him push it. So basically what that means is like people don't want to, um, stop and help if you're not doing anything about your own like your own circumstance. Um, so just try and start doing something now and people will want to come alongside you because you're a trendsetter at that point. But what we look for is just generally nice people. Like um, we want people that are pleasant to be around and understand that the customer is like supremely important because that's without the customer, it's you have no business. And then we just want people that are teachable, essentially. So just people that are willing to learn and can do so in a way that's easy. We don't, have to, we don't want to have to, like, we'll hold your hand for the first week, obviously. But, like, you know, we want you to be, to be learning and be active and, and trying to be independent. Because ultimately, we knew that we weren't going to be around the truck. So we needed to be able to trust that people were learning the system right. and owning it like we want them to take ownership of what they're yeah that's really awesome and i think it's important that you said you can teach a person the skills that you need them to have you can teach them the cooking piece you can teach them those kinds of things but you're looking kind of for a certain kind of person who's going to represent your business well yep. and who you can trust to make the right decision if you're not right there yeah that's really important honestly if you go anywhere like all that stuff is teachable but if you stand out as an individual, like if you just stand out as a person, it's hard to turn that person down. Like I will find a place for a person that stands out to me, you know? Yeah. I really have fallen into like my side hustle job was, was exactly that. I met with this person uh, just to talk because like someone thought I should meet him. 
And then um, he said he was impressed by me. So I was like, I mean, are you impressed enough to like <laughs> let me get a part-time job? It was a no brainer. It was a one day deal. It wasn't a hiring process. Just, it's really just about doing things. Like even if it's little projects that you take on to just like learn for yourself, just try it. And like, there's and no, there's, yeah, there's no failure there. And there's so much that can be learned online now. Yeah. I'm a firm proponent of that. <laughs> I'm even thinking of some volunteer opportunities. Maybe if somebody like we've got a, an eighth grader Parker so maybe if you're not old enough to be getting a job, there may be opportunities in your community where you could volunteer. And not only would you be learning some skills, you'd be developing uh, people skills and just showing that you have that initiative. And somebody who's been interviewing you down the road, that would be a great thing to talk about in an interview. Yep. There's shadowing opportunities. Like if you're not old enough or are not ready to get a job, you can always shadow someone. Getting like, just getting your professional, I think, I've talked to high schoolers before about, and middle schoolers actually, about <laughs> starting really early. Like if you start now with anything professional, you're light years ahead. Like I'm light years ahead and I, I started my senior year of college. So just imagine how much more ahead you would be um, mm -hmm. if you start taking that seriously. Um, so having, like, tell more what you mean about that. Like taking on some professional things. Like uh, what would that look like for say a middle schooler or a young high schooler? There's something... I'm sure you guys have heard of it called LinkedIn. Um, so LinkedIn is a professional social network and it's built for people that are like in the professional world. But there's a new trend happening where high schoolers are starting to get into it and starting to showcase themselves. And it's really easy. Like you can literally look up how to build a LinkedIn presence and you will have every resource you need to make a great LinkedIn, probably better than mine. And everything I know, you can know in like, a month um so if you just take time to do that that's the only thing is people just don't take time to do it um you would stand out beyond everyone else because you would just start connecting with people saying hey i'm a high schooler i've been working on this project like a mock project for a business could i actually do a project for your business possibly like for free i just want to work on my skills and then people would be like absolutely those are connections you make. Those are mentors that become, those are people that become your mentors and potentially people that hire you in the future or something even better. Um, you, you do a really good job on that project and they want to pay you for it. So it's just stuff like that. Like just find things that interest you. It doesn't have to be business, but just really just start. Like it is as easy as just looking up one thing on Google and then saying, all right, I want to try this marketing thing out. And then I go to a business and I say, hey, I'm a high schooler doing a project for a company for free, no pressure. Would you be interested? And they'll be like, what? Like, wow. Hopefully. They'll be like, wow, absolutely. And so then you get to put that on your resume. When you go to apply for colleges or apply for jobs, you might not even need college if you do this, you know, if you become really good at it. But hopefully you do need college. Um, and then you're good. It's really just simple. Um, it just takes some effort. That's all. What was your major in college? I was a supply chain major. So I wanted to study entrepreneurship, but they didn't have it at ISU at the time. And so I studied um, operations and supply chain management, which is like logistics. You sound like you're really a resourceful person, though. That really, it's more about who you are and what you're bringing to it than probably the college classes that you took. People pretty much knew me as like, like my teacher, one of the best teachers I've ever had, one of the best teachers I believe that exists. Um, he would go around the room and like, everyone would update them on their career pro progress. And then he'd get to me and he's like, we already know. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, we know that you're not going the traditional route is what he, he knew. Because like, I made it pretty clear like, I'm not doing that. Like, right. you know, it just wasn't, it's just something I'm pretty passionate about not doing. Yeah. So you probably had a lot of students who, who did want to go that traditional route and just find a business, get a job and do kind of a nine to five kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, it was a liter literally a hundred percent of those students have jobs in that, in that field. Right. A hundred percent placement rate out of that major. So yeah, they all went to like, you know, like, Roche and Rolls Royce and so is the food truck ever in the Indianapolis area? A little bit of catering, we've done for Indy 
drop hundred. We have a concession stand there, and then we've also come for um, first Friday before. So how often do you have events in Terre Haute? Is it is the food truck open like every weekend? Yeah, so we open Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, like a regular restaurant. We usually have about a, a, a week. Awesome. I think this project, it's just, of course, a one-time thing, but I, I think it'll give them some insight into teamwork, kind of what it takes to work with the customers, how to kind of think through this whole planning. We've done a lot of, you know, writing lists and planning and just to kind of see a project through from brainstorming to kind of happening and we know that we'll learn a lot we know that it won't be perfect and that we will uh -huh. afterwards talk about like what we might change and it's possible that we can get the food truck again it you know it's available for part of the year but i think this would be just a kind of a fun beginning of the year project for a group of kids i mean it seems very interesting to me so is there like is certain are certain people going to be cooking and certain ones going to be serving or is it like everyone's going to do everything we are having we're going to really prepare most of it in advance so it will be more like assembling things rather than cooking them um we were a little concerned about like the power supply for the food truck and the generator and we wanted to just really have it be as smooth as possible so we're going to actually prepare some of the food here in the classroom probably the yogurt parfaits and maybe some of the salsa and stuff like that and then um the proteins will be already cooked so it'll kind of be more like just kind of serving the food from the food truck rather than cooking there are also just some um, safety concerns with kids being around you know, fryers or heat sources or that kind of thing. So I think we're gonna focus more on probably logistics and like the customer service piece and hopefully interacting with a, a lot of people who are interested in, in the project. Awesome. I think you guys are doing, doing some cool stuff and I think it's a great opportunity. I wish I had that opportunity to like get in the room type of thing. Um, so I, I think it's awesome and I don't I don't think you're missing anything and if you are that'll just be another learning process well yeah. thank you so much it was so nice to meet you today and I love that you're from Indiana I didn't realize that I feel like it's a great connection for sure yeah <laughs> all right thank you thank, thank you. you bye